Hello, this is Fran Calhoun from the Department of External Affairs. The 2022 session of the Georgia General Assembly has concluded. It's been an extremely busy session with a long focus on statewide and local redistricting for all 159 counties. And the last day of the session was a flurry of activity until the final moments, a quarter past midnight. The governor's fiscal year 2023 budget, House Bill 911, was one of those bills passed late in the evening. The budget bill is based on a revenue estimate of $30.2 billion, which is an increase of $2.9 billion or 10.8% over fiscal year 2022's budget. Highlights of the budget include a $1.6 billion in funding to provide refunds for all taxpayers for the 2021 tax year. Also included is a $5,000 cost of living adjustment for state employees. This would also include county commissioners, constitutional officers, including sheriffs, superior court clerks, probate judges, and tax commissioners and magistrate judges. Increases for all local officials will be effective January 1, 2023. The bill includes an additional $2,000 pay adjustment for public school teachers. Another major focus for state lawmakers was a sweeping behavioral health reform bill, House Bill 1013, which was sponsored by Speaker of the House David Ralston. In a strong bipartisan manner, lawmakers passed the Mental Health Parity Act and the governor has signed the bill into law. If House Bill 1013 on, ensures payment parity for behavioral health treatment services, which means insurance companies will have to start treating mental health care the same way they do physical health care. The legislation brings Georgia in alignment with a 2008 federal health care parity law. Another important behavioral health bill that received final passage was Senate Bill 403, named the Georgia Behavioral Health and Peace Officer Co-Responder Act. And as the name suggests, it establishes a co-responder program to assist law enforcement officers with special behavioral health calls they receive. Supporters believe that this bill will save lives as trained behavioral health specialists will be able to intervene with persons who may be experiencing a behavioral health crisis, allowing law enforcement officers to serve in a backup or support role. And by a vote of 34 to 22, the Georgia Senate gave final passage to Senate Bill 319, known as constitutional carry. This bill will allow Georgians to carry a concealed handgun without getting a license from the state. The bill was a priority of Governor Brian Kemp's and will allow Georgians to carry the handguns everywhere license permit holders currently are allowed to carry them. Guns, of course, would still be prohibited in the secured areas of airports and government buildings. On the elections front, several bills were introduced, but the only elections related language to pass the legislature this year was added to Senate Bill 441, which was originally only addressing state clerks of superior courts. The new language added authorizes the Georgia Bureau of Investigation to assist in investigating alleged election crimes. And then Georgians will also see income tax reductions as House Bill 1437 which revises personal income tax rates was passed by the legislature. Beginning on January 1, 2024, the bill will eliminate personal income tax brackets, replacing them with a 5.9%. The bill allows for future annual reductions of one-tenth of 1% until reaching 4.99%. Film credits will remain active in Georgia after several attempts to strip them from the code and sales tax exemptions for sporting and fine arts 
credits events uh, will continue also. As we know, those credits and exemptions are tremendous economic development draws for major sporting events and the film industry. Other noteworthy bills deliberated during the 40-day session address gang violence and crime. A special anti-gangs division will be housed in the Attorney General's office to crack down on these groups, which are said to have more than 70,000 members statewide. And a bill that will benefit counties uh, that are pursuing transportation improvements through transportation special local option sales taxes, known as TSPLOS referendum, uh, was also passed. House Bill 934 allows single Thank county TSPLOS to, to be collected for the full today. amount of time and not um, simply to the estimated collection this cap. A little bit familiar. This legislation yeah. will not be retroactive, be but will apply to new TSPLOS referendum starting in November this year. Fulton County will be able to participate in the next round should voters approve future TSPLOS referenda. And this is just a snippet of hundreds of bills that passed the legislature. Now those bills have been sent to the governor's office and the governor has 40 days to review and sign or veto any bills. Thank you so much for listening.